it appears to be me and you on this day. Um, on this October 31st, this Halloween. You may not know me. You may, you maybe you do. But I am, as they call, Demon Max. Um, I find the name quite incorrect. I'm neither Demon nor Max. I'm more of a grumpy old man who lives in the consciousness of Max. So, I guess I am sort of a Max, but I'm no demon. Um, you may notice that I'm not visually or vocally distorted in any way. That's because those aren't typical. I don't know why all of my representation so far has been with vocal and visual distortion. It's wrong. It's not me. I'm a human being. Um, you might call me Gom, the Dark One, which might imply evilness. I'm not. E I'm not actually evil. Uh, that was uh, a name bestowed upon me by the uh, elders in the tower um, for my less than sunny disposition. Um, it appears that Max has gotten himself lost in the woods trying to make some starting bit for this Blair Witch review. And uh, also left the equipment here and the script. And so, as a uh, way that he might not fail to get this video done, I shall record the video for him. So, let's begin. Blair Witch. So, from what I understand, Max greatly misled people in the <clears throat> first video he did a couple weeks ago. The game does not end with a dog hugging. Not at all. The game um, has a lot more to it than was told. It was very stripped down trying to get you to play the game is what he was doing there. And so I'm going to give you a review, full review. There will be spoilers, so if you don't want the game spoiled, go play it first, and then you can come back and talk to me. Or even, I will just tell you when I'm going to get into story spoilers. So, speaking of story, I'm going to give the basic story. I think Max went over this before, but um, I'm going to get into it right now. The basic story is that you're this this guy, I can't remember his name, it's not written on the script, um, who is going to help the police search for a lost boy in the woods. The, there's some sort of connection between that your, your character and this boy in the woods that is further explained in the in the game but I will get to that later and so you're in the woods with your dog bullet looking for this lost boy um, and you're behind the police search party by quite a bit and so like you're on your own with the dog and that's where the game starts <coughs> There is a, the gameplay is very simple. It's not entirely a walking simulator, but it's mostly walking around and kind of solving puzzles and mostly just looking at the scenery, um, trying to find clues that will point you in the direction of the lost boy. Uh, so if that's not the type of game you're interested in, don't stay away. But if you aren't gone yet, I will get further into gameplay. So. There are, like I said, there are some puzzles you have to solve. There are some enemies. There is a little bit of combat, but it's not like typical combat. You have only a flashlight, so you can point the flashlight at things. And there are enemies that you come across in the darkness that uh, you point the flashlight out to injure them and kill them. And so, so there are a handful of scenarios in the game where you'll run into combat with these enemies where you're pointing the flashlight at them to kill them and it's uh decently engaging it's a 
a good time. You know, it's very, it's scary. It catches you and it puts you on edge. And the game uses the dog bullet to sort of like help you find where they are because they're hard. You can't see them very well in the dark. And so the bullet will face at them and bark. And so you can point the flashlight at them to kill them. And so that's sort of the only combat, really. Um, you also have a video camera that is used in mostly puzzles, but there are also some like story pieces where you'll find tapes that either have story or like there's blue tapes that have like videos that show you things, and there's red tapes that you can use to like change the environment, which are very cool. I like um, those are cool. So the red tapes that you can use to change the environment, and those are pretty cool. So uh, you can use those, and so there are a handful of puzzles where like an area has is like destroyed, and you have to use the the camera to rewind into the point in the camera where that area is not destroyed. Or there's um, one puzzle that's at a log moving thing where you have to like go get parts and you have to bring them back and put them on the log moving thing, and you have to use the camera to light the fire in it because you don't have the ability but there's like a point in the camera that shows you where the how that has the fire going in the thing and so you can use that to do the fire and so though that's very it's a very it's very interesting it's got some cool mechanics there and i feel like that's underutilized a bit so the the camera is a bit underutilized um at least until you get into lighter parts of the game so now this will be a spoiler there may or may not be time codes on the screen or something um so the here is this you, there's a later part in the game where you are you run into this uh this guy who's in the woods i don't remember what he's called but he's like a woods guy who's sort of the villain kind of like well the villain is the blair witch but he this villain this guy's like sort of the the hand sort of luring people into the woods to her. And so this guy kind of gets you and knocks you out. And when you get your camera back, he's put like a marking on their camera, which makes it function differently. And so now you can see like certain things in the camera. It's not like you can't like look through the viewfinder anymore and like night vision or like to see things anymore, but you can now see like supernatural things in the camera like it's used heavily in the like very last section of the game where you're sort of trying to avoid um enemies that you can see only through the camera you can see where they are through the camera but you can't like go near them or look at them or they will kill you so you have to use the camera to sort of avoid them and so i like that the uh camera is used because there's also a handful of sections where like all of the lights goes out in an area in that last section and you can only see through the camera and I think some of those sections are really effective for the horror. <clears throat> I've mentioned I think I've mentioned all of the monsters so far. Um, you saw the ones I ran remember running into except for during the PTSD sequence this is a s spoilers here during this PTSD sequence that is set before the dog hug you um you are walking through this area with like a lot of leaves and there are these like big balls of leaves leaves that roll around and if you get near them they will injure you and kill you and so like you're that section is interesting because you're contending with like this like war scenario like war scenery where it's like very like fiery and you can hear like gunfire and bombs dropping but like the the actual dangers of the situation are these like big leaf piles rolling around in these areas between like islands where there aren't leaves and it's interesting visually it's a very interesting section visually there will hopefully be footage on screen i'm not sure so <clears throat> and i think that Max mentioned this in the first video, but the game does an excellent job of making you feel lost in the woods. Like, the whole game, you sort of feel like you 
don't exactly know where you are and you don't know where you're going and there's not like a 100% feeling of like certainty of place like things move around and like space stretches and like changes around here and there throughout the game to where like you don't really feel like you're ever like certain of where you are and that's really effective in and what the game is trying to do Now, again, we're going to talk some spoilers again, so I'm going to get into the rest of the story and so that I can bring you to the ending section of the game. So the story is that you are this, like I said, you're this guy, you're looking for this lost boy in the woods, and this is a woods where some people were killed, and the Blair Witch legend lives in these woods. So um, you're sort of walking around these haunted kind of woods and it sort of slowly like gets weird it pulls you in slowly where it's like it's not maybe for like the first 30 45 minutes where you like actually get into like the the spooky stuff you yeah good dog um you're just searching through the thing and I don't remember exactly what happens, but you're you're looking through the woods, you're looking for this boy, you have the dog, and I think the first time anything spooky happens is when you get separated from Bullet for the first time, where, like, because of the experiences of the main character and his PTSD and stuff, he um, has a sort of... Bullet is there as a, uh, what's it called? Uh, a service animal. And for his severe anxiety. And so Bullet sort of runs off at one point, like, looking for something. And because you can't catch up and you can't find him, the character has a panic attack. And it's the, sort of the first big spooky section that happens. And there's sort of more of that to where, like, you start questioning, like, what's real, really? Like, especially when, like, you find the, this weird tree that's got, like, that's, like, dripping and sludgy and, like, it seems like it's running, which is weird, and you start, like, you hear some, you start experiencing some, like, weird, like, time dilation where, like, you're in the same place, but, like, you do something in the car and this truck and you come out and you're suddenly like it's daytime now and you find a paper that says like a year that's like several years in the future you know and it's this weird there's some weird like time dilation stuff that happens it's like really effective in like setting you off balance and like being not fully sure what's happening or where you are going and you know it all ties into that like feeling lost like kind of the whole time while still like with, with, while still like making progress there's not like there's not a point in the game where I felt like I was lost and not going anywhere like even when I felt lost I was moving in a direction that the game was sort of pointing me in you know and so I think it's really effective and like keeping you feeling like you don't know where you are and you don't know where you're going but still like leading you where you need to go it's a very effective in that manner and that's it's really good and so the story sort of leads you to these different places where you sort of um, you have these big like psychological horror set pieces where like there's a lot of like the the main character's post-traumatic stress disorder of his traumatic experiences in the past that he's sort of reliving there's one one thing that you can run through where you have um, a relationship with some lady. I don't remember her name at the moment. I think it might be like Jessica or something. You can call her on the phone. And there are like different moments where like you can choose to call her where you have service again. And when you do choose to call her when you have cell phone service, you get story confirm you get story in there. You get a, like a conversation between the two of them. And I actually got an um, I got an achievement for like completing that sort of story section without even realizing that was something 
that was like a narrative thing. You know, it's it's a very like optional narrative part. So like, you know, you sort of fixed that relationship in a sense, which is just really cool that like that's even there. And so later in the game, you sort of get the roots deeper and deeper into the roots of this. Um, these traumatic experiences where there's one experience where like you kind of get it really early in the um the ptsd six runs that happens before you hug bullet where like the main character sort of led a group of soldiers into an ambush and everyone but him died or at least everyone but him was hurt i think it was like some of them died and some of them were injured but like except for him and so, like, that is, like, there's a lot of this guilt where, like, he caused this. And, like, you get these, like, bits towards the end of the game where you have, like, voices from nowhere sort of calling the main character, like, a murderer and a coward and things like that. And then there's a lot of, like, these really, really cool, like, psychological horror set pieces that happen within this game that I don't think would be as effective in a film because, like you don't have the same direct connection to characters in a film that you would hear in a first-person video game. So, then later on, you get more of that story, but first you get um, the connection to the boy that's lost in the woods. So you kind of get the connection that, like, you caused, you did something to the boy's older brother that, like, hurt him somehow, and so you're trying to come find him as repentance or penitence, you know, or whatever. And um, you come to find out later in the game through a, a sequence that you get to sort of experience first person in, like, the latter section where... In, this, in the last section of the game, which is... The last section of the game, I'm going to get to that first. You come to this, like, big house that suddenly appears in the woods. Um, and you go inside and you go into the basement. And when you go into the basement you, like, end up going through the house in this sort of, like, very much PT, PT, the Silent Hills playable teaser, way where you're sort of walking through corridors and walking through areas and you're, like, sort of hitting dead ends and turning around and coming back to a different area and all that stuff. That's, I find, I find really effective in horror, and especially in this horror game where you're really supposed to feel lost. Um... It's, it's very effective in, like, keeping you moving, but still, like, you don't know where you're going. You don't know where you're supposed to be going. You just know that you're supposed to go somewhere. And the game's sort of leading you along. And in that last section, you go through a lot of, like, like uh, time dilation. Like, there's a, there's a point where it references back to that point where you're in the, the truck where you need to turn the lights on. And it takes you to a different, like, time entirely. Where, like, you got a call on your walkie-talkie at that point that said, like, turn on the lights. And, and at that point, you walk th past that in this last section while you're, like, exploring the house. And you pull out the walkie-talkie and you say into the walkie-talkie to your past self, turn on the lights. Like, it's... it's it, I don't know what that means, really. It's uh, something that, like... I don't understand the weird time dilation, but it still, it very much uh, continues to put forth that, like, feeling of, like, being lost and not understanding what's going on, which makes you really look for some sort of, like, solution at the end. And so you're coming through the end, and you get these, some, some of these answers, like, you get the answer that, like, what the main character did to the older brother of this little boy who's lost in the woods. And so... What happens, and, and like I said, you get to experience this, this situation in first person where you come out and you're a police officer. And there's these, you get a call where these kids are like vandalizing or robbing this convenience store. And you just see this sequence first person where you shoot this boy as a police officer. You shoot this kid with your gun. You kill him. And that's, that's the connection that the main character has to this young boy that's lost in the woods is he killed his older brother. And he feels awful about it. And then later on, you come to find that, like, 
during the the other stuff, the other thing, like the war PTSD, he he not only led several soldiers to their deaths and to be injured severely. He, in his attempt to escape and hide, murdered a woman in like cold blood. Not what would have been cold blood. He murdered a woman who was innocent, who didn't do anything, and. Because it was interesting because you'd see that sort of sequence peeking out in different sections earlier in the game. You didn't know what it was. And so, like, to have this sort of come down and, like, who, who is this guy that I'm in the shoes of now? Like, you, you feel that he's an okay person, but, like, these sort of, like, threads that you pull are, like, what's going... Like, you're supposed to both empathize and be disgusted with this, this, this guy because... There's a sort of, there's a sense that, like, he's, he's done these terrible things that, like, some of them aren't his fault, like, leading soldiers into an ambush. Then that's not his fault, but the, the murders that he actually committed are. And so you come out to the end of the game, and you're fighting, you come out to the end of the game, and you come out through the basement, and nobody's there, and you come back up out of the house, and... There's there's the guy, the the woods, the forest man, there, and you start fighting him, and like you don't have control over the section. It's a cutscene, which is sort of a shame, but you have um, punching. You're punching the the forest man, and the forest man's just laughing at you, and you punch him, and you punch him, and uh, I'm actually gonna cut back because I forgot an important section. There's a section earlier in the game that like really feeds into this where. Um, you are using bullet to search for things for a ritual that the guy wants you to do. And um, the last section of that, he leaves you with a gun and tells you to kill bullet. And you don't get a choice in the matter here. Um, but the, the main character just straight refuses to do it. He straight up refuses to kill bullet. And in the, the process of that ending, like bullet gets scared off and falls into like a ravine and gets injured and you spend the, you get this really like excruciating segment of the game where I feel like I feel like it went on for significantly too long I think it I think it would have been more effective had it ended a couple runs through earlier but you're running through this this ravine and it's basically a circle you're looping back to the beginning each time and you're just carrying bullet who is injured and as you walk through, there's text on the wall that slowly goes up that says, let dying dogs lie. It, it's, this very, it's this very sort of powerful thing that I feel like had it gone on a little less long, it wouldn't have dragged as much. It felt like it started to drag because like that text showed up and there were still like five or six walks through this ravine that that I had to do before it was the section was done, and so that leads into you being really angry at the uh, um, woods guy who you were sort of communicating with and working with to do this ritual, and so you come to the end and you punch him to death. The main character punches him to death, and in him dying, he becomes the forest man, <laughs> and it's this really silly kind of moment where like you're you kill him. And then you kind of look into this puddle of water and it's his face on your face in the reflection. And then you look over and there's Bullet and he comes out of the woods and in this ending that I got, because there's multiple endings, that he comes out of the woods and he goes, Borf! And then hops off into the distance. And it's sort of like, okay, that's the end of the game. And you get some text saying like certain things that did or didn't get wrapped up. And so I don't know what exactly... Happened. I got the ending that was called the good ending, I believe. I believe the ending... It was either the good ending or the true ending. I don't remember. Um, and so... There are, as I've looked up, there are four other endings, and they're all basically the same with, like, slight details changed. So, like, I don't feel like replaying is worth it. But, um... It is... It is a good experience. I do think that it should be played so I recommend that people experience this game because it is very very powerful in certain sections and I feel like the experience once is is worth it though I'm not sure about anything after that um, 
Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Woo. I was super lost in the woods for a long time. Uh, sucks that I forgot my camera and equipment. Why is the camera rolling? Some note from Demon Max. So oh. Demon Max recorded the. Demon Max recorded the review for me. I don't know if I should thank him or be upset. Well, ugh, I'm here now. Uh, Doesn't look like you turn off the camera, so uh, I don't know. Um, I'm gonna assume he did a good job. Uh, I'm gonna agree with everything he said if he read off my script. So I recommend the game. Go play it. Um, if you want to see the full uncut unedited behind the scenes whatever version of this video you can go on to patreon.com and then for the one dollar tier you can see all uh, behind the scenes footage there so check that out if you're interested in that um if not that's fine uh do whatever you want but uh i'd like to thank you guys so much for watching i will see you next time Bye. <sighs> I should give Demon Max his own show. Because he didn't really do anything this, this year. I'll consider that. If he's going to hang around. Oh, what's this thing? The note has changed. Don't call me Demon Max. My name is Gom. Right, Demon Max. Anyway, like I said, thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.